audio this time. Uh, let me know if you can get the audio, if it's coming through all right. I'm at Cayburn and uh, it's pretty windy. So I thought I would just give you some uh, live streaming tutorial on understanding the airflow around the hill when it's windy. Hopefully it's lens is going to sort itself out. There we go. Right, so there you can see the wind speed. It's coming back onto the hill. And now I'm parked right in the Venturi here. So that's the windy bit. Okay. Give me a moment, I'll get a little bit more height and then we can maybe do some more chat. Just trying to see where I can find the chat comments. There we go. Hey Jonas, let me know brother if you can hear me all right. Is my audio coming through okay? And how's the picture? This is all a bit of an experiment. sound is nice and crisp thanks Janus okay fantastic so I've been uh, I've been struggling uh, with the GoPro thanks guys um, this is as simple as you can get this is my um, mobile phone strapped on my riser on the side with a piece of velcro and if I just push it down there a bit just to make sure it doesn't fall off uh, there we go how's it guys um, I'm a bit close to this side, so I will leave you with the, the better picture of um, being facing the other way. That's a bit close. And there we go. Hey, Sebastian. Fantastic. Yeah, so um, I've been trying to get this live streaming setup working for months. And I've got to, got to give a big shout out to GoPro because their app is just pathetic. I can't believe that in 2021 you can't just push GoPro like go live and get it to work. So um, I'm going to give you guys this live stream just off a mobile phone. This is the best that I can do. Um, Diego, yes it is Mount Cabern, the mighty Mount Cabern. And it's pretty windy. Uh, most people have stopped flying, uh, which gives me the perfect opportunity to give you guys a bit of a demonstration of understanding the wind flow around the hill. So um, my apologies for the little, uh, the sort of seasick air footage, <laughs> that's the best I can do. I can't uh, fly with gimbals and stuff, so um, you've got a rise amount and that's the best that we can get. Um, cool, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Thomas, um, I do want to improve the setup in the future and give you guys some kind of like Vario display out in front. Um, but that's all going to come in time. For now, we're just going to hope that the camera focuses on things. There we go. I can sort of focus on the distance and give you some kind of idea of where we are. There's my shadow. So I'm looking back at the hill now. I'm going directly downwind. My ground speed is about 62. 60, 62. So, um, if I turn into wind over here, I'm pointed into the wind is about where the sun is. So now I'm pointing into wind and I've got a little touch of brake on and I'm about seven, nine, seven k's an hour. I'm just going to see if I can do something here. Um, I'm just going to see if I can get yeah, there we go. Okay, so I see that as soon as I jump off the live stream to look at any other app, I lose uh, the live stream. So I'm going to need a second phone to be able to do this properly. Um, okay, but if you guys go to uh, live.xcontest.org, you should be able to pick up my track log. I am streaming live. Um, I've got live tracking. So you'll be able to see where I am and that will maybe help you understand of uh, the tutorial about what the wind's doing and uh, what the site is. 
So have a look at live.xcontest.org and if somebody in the chat could uh, post that link into the, into the chat comments, that would help. And other guys can just click on that and go through once you found it. You're going to have to search for me, Greg Hamilton, um, in the live server in the UK. Um, but once you've done that, you'll find my track. Okay, so back to the hill. We're talking about wind flow around the hill. So if I'm sitting out here, I'm in front. If I can maybe tip you down a little bit. There we go. So there's a little farmhouse in the front. And if I'm in front of the hill, there's a point that I'll get to where my penetration will be very limited again. When the airflow is coming horizontally over the fields, um, let's say the wind's blowing in a base wind of, I don't know, 30 maybe. So out here, I'm going to feel the full force of the wind in a horizontal vector. So there's only a limit to how far I can go forward. But there's a patch where the ground is sloping, this bit here, in between the top of the hill and where it goes flat again. And in that section, the airflow is coming up at an angle. So that means that that 30 kilometers an hour is acting that way, which only means there's about 20, maybe 22 or something like that acting horizontally, which is what I'm fighting against. So I've got a little bit better penetration, just a little bit further forward, um, just over these trees and sort of in the mid range is a nice place to sit because I've got a little bit of freedom of movement because the air is lifting. That means I've got slightly more forward speed over the ground. My airspeed stays the same, but I can actually move a little bit. So that's where you want to put yourself, somewhere ahead of the ridge before you get into the flat ground out in front. And you want to avoid the top of the ridge. You can see here, the top of the ridge here, we've got a, a kind of a, a dip in the ground. Now all this wind that's coming through here is going to want to rush through that gap. So I can expect if I'm going to go and fly over there, I'm going to have quite strong wind just on the top where the aerofoil shape of the hill is. So let's go and investigate. So it might be a bit windy now because I'm on full speed bar. Just accelerating to get down there. <laughs> Janice, what do I think about the new X Alps route? I think it's great. Um, I think uh, it's been very kind on the athletes. It might be longer, but I think that last section that used to go down to Monaco um, is just an accident waiting to happen. Exhausted pilots pushing into the sea breeze, with limited altitude, really strong winds. Um, I don't like that. It's much better to flow that way from Monaco up to the north. So going to the west after Mont Blanc, means that you've got uh, basically a prevailing tailwind a bit and you've got nice south side strong conditions so it's going to be a race this time it's going to be full-on fast flying i think in the second half of the race which will make it really exciting cool back to the hill um okay so i haven't really got down i'm going to just spiral a little bit hold on to your coffee down we go now obviously when the wind's strong you've got to be super careful of this kind of turn where you're facing at the hill and you come in with all your speed because if you get it wrong and you hit turbulence you're going to impact the hill really fast so make sure your turns are always away from the hill so i'm just trying to like back into this venturi carefully i don't want to go in against the hill there so i'm going to go figure of eight around this way and come up and soar up to the top right so let's get it something to focus on again like that so now i'm up at the top here and this is the area where you need to be careful of the venturi pushing you over because it's quite smooth and all the wind is going to be forced to go through that little channel so here i'm parking into wind and i've got uh, i kind of got eight again that's all right What's happening here, see if you guys can spot anything upwind of me that would be affecting the wind. 
So upwind of me, I've got that nice big brown field. The sun's shining on it. So that's a classic thermal trigger. We've got two fields there and a road in the middle. So the warm air is going to heat up there. You've got some little triggers of the cars. Then you've got another little reservoir of heat. And then you've got a kicker onto the green grass. So I'm currently flying in and out of thermals. And that's going to change my wind speed because the thermal is going more vertically again. So as you go through the thermal, you get more uh, penetration over the ground. Your speed over the ground should increase. You should be able to go forward. And then when you come out the other side of the thermal, the wind's pulling back towards the thermal a bit and you end up slowing down. So I'm watching that all the time when I'm thermaling, when I'm flying here and I'm trying to find thermals, I'm watching my ground speed and I'm looking for when my ground speed increases. It means I'm either in a thermal or I'm going to a thermal. It's just in front of me. Right, other things you've got to be careful of. If you've got the wind coming in from over there and you've got this sort of terrain, you're going to have the wind creating turbulence over that obstacle as it spills over back onto the hill. So you want to avoid the whole area that's downwind of that. If you imagine that was on fire, where would the smoke go? That's where you want to avoid. Right, back to the hill. There's me shadow. Hello. And back across the face. Now the whole time when I'm soaring here, I don't want to get too high up on the hill because I could just end up in that Venturi and not be able to go forward. So when you're soaring like this, you want to move as far forward as you can until you start losing the lift. So I just fly out until it stops beeping. We'll go beep, beep, beep. And then I get to the edge of the lift band and that's where I want to play. Okay. So now I'm going to go onto the big conical section of the hill. You'll get a view of it in a moment once I turn around into wind again. I'm just whizzing past it. Getting a lot of lift. That's into a thermal. So I can turn on that. And I can use that to just give me a nice bit of height. So you can see the top of the hill. Right, that's the top of Mount Cabern. It's a nice uh, big area to run off behind. So if one did, did get pushed over, it's not too dangerous. There is a bit of space to run back on uh, green fields, which is why I'm happy to kind of push the limits of wind strength when I'm flying here. Right. <laughs> Pierre. Do you think the Swiss team has an advantage with the new X Alps route? The Swiss team always has an advantage because they're Swiss. They, they uh, you know, you grow up living on a big mountain, you really understand the mountains. And this course is totally about mountains. There's a little bit of flatland section in the beginning. Um, so that sort of section might be a little tricky and that might be a bit of an equalizer for the strong guys on the ground and for the guys that can puzzle out the light conditions. Um, but as soon as they're into the main big mountains, the Swiss usually have an advantage. They just understand the mountains so well. Um, this, uh, Kriegel is just an absolute master of mountain flying. So um, I think it's still the Swiss are the guys to beat in that course. I don't think it's given them any extra advantage. It's still mountain flying and uh, maybe slightly less um, uh, the sort of crowd support that the French pilots used to get running all the way down to the finish uh, that's been taken away from them a bit by having to go back into Italy um, but hey it's just a different crowd it, it gives a different uh, part of the Alps the opportunity to participate in the X Alps so I think it's great I think it's great that they're changing it uh, it's really nice to have a different route uh, Jean-Michel do I use accelerator at all at the moment I'm not using accelerator and I would typically, um, I would never fly if I had to use accelerator just to be able to um, be safe. You know, my accelerator is there for getting out of trouble. So if I can't fly safely just with my hands up, 
on my trim speed, then I want to leave the hill. Then I'll go down and land because I've got no margin for error. Because uh, you must remember, if the air gets turbulent, if some like sea breeze came in or something, uh, it'd be limited to what I can do on the speed bar. And it would also mean that because the glide is pitching, you wouldn't have your full speed. Your pen penetration over the ground would be reduced dramatically in turbulence. So I always keep that as a safety factor. I'm at the moment, I'm flying hands up. I've got no brakes on, I've got no speed bar on, and I'm getting sort of 11, 12 over the ground. Uh, Jonas, are you flying any Volbivs this year? I hope to. Um, I'm not doing any plans uh, because of coronavirus. So last year I had a lot of stuff planned for the Alps and it just got messed up and you had to cancel flights and cancel bookings and cancel leave and all of that. So I'm not doing anything uh, internationally except for the Eiger Tour, which I really hope is going to be on. Um, but apart from the Eiger Tour, I haven't got anything planned. I'd love to go to the Pyrenees and uh, I will go back to the Pyrenees as soon as, but I've got a lot of stuff to do in the UK this year. So X Lakes. Uh, ex Scotia, uh, ex Snowden, Iriri, and uh, there's a lot to do. So I'm just happy to get back in the air. Um, cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep it on uh, around the airflow around the hills and Venturis and that sort of stuff. I want to try and do these live streams so it's. Uh, something more useful for pilots that come after the live stream they can actually look at that and it's like ah oh, this is a live stream about understanding the airflow or something so um, i'll try and keep it more on the hill stuff and less on like glider reviews so i did see your question about the tonic 2 i'm not going to really start getting into glider reviews thanks philip dodd that's awesome thanks for the contribution i'll go and have a beer once i land um problem with beer at the moment is it's really boring you got to go to like the supermarket and go and buy yourself a beer and go and sit in the top of the hill um, by yourself you know because <laughs> the pubs aren't open so um, that's all right I've got a really wicked camper van so I'll go and find somewhere nice and scenic and uh, I'm probably going to um, do a, a book review on Gavin's new book shout out to Gavin McClurg he's just released advanced paragliding I've just uh, opened it and had a sniff and that's about as far as my reviews got uh, it looks awesome. It's got uh, some real superstars in that book and he's basically condensed everything into one book, which is brilliant. So you don't have to sit through 200 hours of podcasts. Uh, if that's not your thing, you can just uh, dip into the book and get some knowledge. So I'm going to do a review on that in my camper van later and uh, enjoy a cup of coffee after that said beer from Philip. Cool. Up we go. Right, so um, back to the hill, I'm now drifting back, I don't know if I can get the camera to point down, it's a bit tricky, I need a new mount for this little uh, phone, but I, this is super simple for me to do this. Um, so I'm like parked at the top here now, my ground speed is zero, so this is sitting with a little bit of brake. And this is what you've got to be careful of when you've got a conical sort of hill. There's a separation point in front of the hill, which is where I am now, I'm pointing straight into wind and I'm straight over the conical section and that's where the wind speed will be the least. As soon as you veer off to the side and you just go slightly to the side you suddenly get the Venturi effect because the wind is splitting. So there my speed has dropped quite dramatically. I'm coming back over that hill, that little piece that I was flying. You can have the same effect over here on this piece you'll have the same effect there so this is usually where the guys get into trouble on Mount Cabern it's flying in here and then getting blown around the corner over the back because that's where all the wind comes hammering in so now I'm kind of sitting in the teeth of the wind and I'm gonna have to use speed bar a little bit here just to push forward so sorry about the wind noise but now I've got thermals and wind pushing against me so when you put yourself back in that venturi position the thermals are quite slanted because it's the the thermals will tend to track up the hill 
So when you go to a shallow point of the hill, the thermals add to the wind strength because they're going fairly horizontally. When you move yourself out to the steeper sections of the hill or out on the separation line straight into wind from the high point, you get a much better chance of being able to pick off thermals. So I'm now going to like slow back down again. That should ease the wind noise for you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> this Omega X Alps is super quick. Cool. Um, now jump lead ads. Uh, BHBA says we are allowed to fly. Um, you're just supposed to fly local. Obviously what I'm doing right now is the biggest social distancing you could ever get and I'm not near anybody and I'm in my local area so I haven't traveled very far to get to the hill I'm in my local area doing exercise outdoors and uh, we're allowed to do that from the end of the week 29th things will open up even more um, that's when the official stay at home rule is dropped but it's all a bit conflicted if you looked at different uh, websites and different advice but the official advice from the BHPA is that we're allowed to fly locally and uh, instructors have been allowed to fly for about a month now because of maintaining currency. It's very important that uh, professionals in the sport are actually current and uh, particularly when you're going to go and do tandem flying, you want to know that the pilots had lots of airtime. So that's a safety thing. Cool. So there we are. Hey, that's the first picture you can actually see. <laughs> Thanks, Sebastian some crisps to go to the supermarket I think I'll get myself a little pie um, one of those bacon and cheese turnovers or something like that wicked thanks guys you'll give me a good evening <laughs> so um, I'm gonna try and uh, work on a camera setup um, that will give you a better picture and like the ability to like for me to pan around and look at things I mean I can move this a little bit but um, I don't really want to drop the phone and maybe if we push it a little bit that way, you can get a little bit more of like where I'm going and not off to the side. But that's about the best. Um, yeah, jump all ads. I'm reading this while I'm flying. Uh, it's very easy. I've finally got a position that works um, because it's uh, on my riser. So it's kind of in my sight line. I don't have to look down to read comments. They're, they're right there, right next to me. And I have got good at uh, reading. So Jonas, any tips in coring in strong wind? Okay, now this sort of place at the moment, I haven't really got a good enough thermal to really 360. If it came through a little bit stronger, I'd have something to work with to demonstrate that. But right now I'm riding, there are thermals, um, but what I would do with these sort of thermals is I'd actually just pull on the brakes and hang in one position because the thermals are getting blown onto the hill and they're coming through here in one spot and the best way to ride these and to call these is just to hang on the brakes I'm not talking about stalling the glider but I've got uh, probably a third brake on now I'm flying fairly slowly and I'm just using my position to be in the right spot for all the thermals to come through and push through I can't really 360 because I will just 360 myself back into the Venturi so the only way to solve that puzzle would be to go forward and to pick off something over in front of the farmhouse. That's, that's where I would try and core in this sort of strength wind. I'd want to go forward and pick off something off the fields. And there I did a pretty in-depth uh, video on my website, flywithgreg.com. I've got more instructional stuff on there if you guys are interested. Um, I did a very in-depth one on flying in the flatlands and uh, the sort of strength of the thermal that you need to be able to go cross country. And it depends on the strength of that climb. If the climb is under 1.5 meters a second, there's no point really trying to leave the hill in it because you're never going to come back to the hill unless you've got a good lapse rate and you can just drift with it and hope to continue with that one thermal. So in this sort of stuff, I would be hoping for something at 1.5 um, but I could zigzag so I could go out find something that's one meter a second left it drifting back and then when I get to the crest line of the hill I then leave it and push forward on speed bar 
and then get another thermal and just keep on zigzagging like that to to build up my height but right now it's just not sunny enough there's not enough bubbling off those fields so we're basically just going back to the hill so yes jumble ads i'm flying right now this is live we are live on youtube and uh, i've found the totally uncrowded flying site because it's pretty windy <laughs> so this is the venturi bit i was telling you about check how fast we go Yee-hoo! that's the scary bit and if you turn around and come the other way you parked in the venturi and you've got very little ground speed very little forward speed here i've got maybe three or four k's an hour whoosh super up we go so you'll see i'm always turning fairly early i'm actually it's more like doing figure of eights just in front of the the main spine so um, San Fran Pollen, it is not impossible to read anything while you're live streaming. <laughs> it's pretty easy for me. I've got very good close sight, so when I'm looking at a phone, I can see everything. Um, not particularly good at distance, so it uh, actually works quite well for me. And uh, oh, one thing I needed to do to remember to do is put you on charge. Let me just do that quickly. Um, looks like I'm going to have to extend this cable slightly get you on charge here so we don't run out of power while we're live streaming a uh, little bit over there goes in like that and we need to move the battery across a bit the very across a bit I love velcro cool uh, yeah Barlint Oxa 3 I am on a Omega X Ops it is my beauty i absolutely love it and uh, um, can you point the camera down uh, <laughs> yeah i'll give you a moment um it's not ideal because um no then i will i will um, bring it off the velcro that's attaching it to the riser so i will improve the setup in time um that's maybe improved the sound a little bit hi sandrin um, Kurt, no gloves. Is it warm? No, I'm just hardcore, man. <laughs> uh, it's it's actually quite pleasant. I'm pretty low here. I'm only like, what's my altitude here? 200 meters above sea level. Um, I would normally have gloves on, but given that I'm doing a live stream, I figured I might need some touch ability. Um, but what I have got is a little stylus. So I can just tap over there on the shutter and uh, activate the screen if I need to. So that will be making my lot easier. Um, Gilham, uh, do I plan to release a book? You know, I've done books in the past, Gilham. I've, um, I wrote a, a paragliding novel, which is a bit uh, wacky and offbeat. That was when I was 20. Um, I did uh, two fantasy novels, which were epic fantasy novels, which took me like two, three years to write. Um, and uh, I did the, the best flying sites of the Alps. I did all the editing on that and all the design and pr uh, printing publication. So I've done my time with books. Um, I might do some sort of instructional video um, book in the future, but to be honest, I've got so much uh, work to do with the videos and pilots are getting so much out of it that um, for the next foreseeable two years, I think I'm going to be doing videos on flywithgreg.com. Um, I've got tons of stuff to do and lots of courses and course ideas. Uh, Volbiv course, hike and fly course, tandem flying course. So yeah, that's where I'm going to be. That's where I'm pouring all my creativity into my website. And I do what I can with YouTube. So um, that's why I'm doing live and I'm wanting to get more of the live stuff um, over the season and uh, you haven't seen me because it hasn't been flyable and we haven't been allowed to fly um, so i'll be doing lots more live streaming cross-country flying through the year and uh, you guys can quiz me while i'm going cross-country uh, i think that's where youtube's going to move for me because i don't have the time to do all the editing uh, you know putting all the fancy music and competing with awesome guys like alias with all of his stuff um, 
and Bandera and everybody else on YouTube and uh, Tucker Gott and those guys, you know, they're guys that are regular on YouTube and it's a lot of work, eh? And uh, I don't have the time to dedicate to that, so I'll be doing much more live. I'll do one or two videos for you guys on YouTube, but if you want the real stuff, come and join me on my website. It is a membership site, but it's well worth it and I've got a fantastic community. There is a chat room there as well, which I'm in daily which means you can ask me things directly and I can respond when I've got a little bit more attention than while I'm trying to fly around. Um, Zelio, Zelko about a new uh, best flying site to the Alps. <laughs> yep, I would love to do that. Um, it is in my, one of my, you know, project pile. Um, it requires me to do quite a bit of uh, refreshing research. Uh, which is great because it means I need to go and visit all the sites to get the latest information. Um, I have thought of collaborating with like local guides and that and just give them a little bit of a punt in the in the page on each site and then they can update the information. So it'd be possible for me to do without traveling. Um, but at the moment it's not top of the pile. So I've got other projects that I need to do and like you know, the sites don't change. The only things that change, occasionally there will be some new access restriction or some person to contact in town that's changed from before. And that you can search for on the web. That's always there, the local clubs will have their site information up, you can find out who's who. Um, but the actual guidance and like where to go, that doesn't change, the mountains don't move. So I feel like that uh, the book as it is is still really valid. I use it a lot if I go to the Alps. So I'm happy with it as it is. And I've got to be very careful of how many projects I try and pick up. Because it's only me. I do all my own editing, I do my own filming, I do everything. Um, all the responses and questions and all of that. So I'm just trying to um, limit being overwhelmed. Cool. Hey Matt. <laughs> when am I back? Um, Gavin, when am I back in Cape Town? Um, yeah, I would have loved to have been in Cape Town this last year, but then COVID. Um, I will be back as soon as I can. Uh, probably end of the year, I'd expect. Um, we're always a bit limited by my wife's leave because she's a nurse. She's in high demand at the hospital, so it's difficult to get time off, particularly when everybody else wants it uh, for Christmas holidays. So. That's usually my South Africa break. It keeps me sane because in the middle of winter here in the UK, it's pretty bleak. So I like to get back to South Africa and uh, I'll probably do that in December. We'll see. Uh, it hasn't gone cloudy because I've gone into cloud. It's just because the camera is trying to focus. Sweet. Okay, guys. Fantastic. Um, Cool. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, I do my best. I really love this sport and I want everybody to enjoy it the way I do. Um, and I think this, you know, it, it just takes knowledge and understanding to be able to make this safe and enjoyable. And it's pretty overwhelming in the beginning, but if you just stick at it and you just keep on searching out the right kind of knowledge and information, just keep working at it you can make this into a really fantastic thing. And the feeling of freedom comes the more experience you have. So it takes some time to get that feeling that you think, you know, as free as a bird. But uh, for the first few years, I think it's, it's not really that. It's uh, you, you're dealing with safety and getting scared and dealing with uh, controlling the glider. And it's a lot of stuff that you've got to absorb. But then once you've got it all together, it just becomes this game that you can play. Somebody down there, let's see if I can spiral over him. Yahoo! Let's go around and see if we can get you in the camera. Somebody walking up. Yahoo! <laughs> He's walking up from the bottom of the hill. It's a sneaky way to get up. So now when I'm lower, I'm using this Venturi fact to, to mean that I've got enough strength to give me some ridge lift. But as soon as I'm getting the lift, I'm moving back into wind. So I'm, below me I've got a flat field. 
but because of my position, I know I'm getting ridge lift because the air has got nowhere to go. Okay. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Sorry about the rain in Oregon. Nothing I can do about that. And yeah, it's not always like this, you know. I'm, I'm making sure that whenever it's flyable this year, I'm going to be out and flying. Um, flying has become priority number one. Now, after this whole COVID thing, you know, we had this uh, pretty serious situation and I feel like I've pretty much got through it. And uh, I'm going to make sure that my priority is getting as much airtime. And then work and other things come after that. <laughs> so there's a little picture. Thanks, Demetrius. Wow, that's amazing, brother. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for your contribution. Really appreciate it. So there's a little dude down the bottom. I think it's a single skin glider or a, or a little trainer. And he's flying just did a little hop. I think he's uh, one of the instructors. He's just trying to see if it's safe to take his student onto the hill to give him a little flight. And that's always a difficult call because you want students to be trained in this sort of stuff because this is what they're going to be flying in. But you're taking a lot of responsibility when you're telling somebody, hey, you can launch now, it's safe. It's a massive responsibility and the instructors are never ever paid enough. So big up to all the instructors. I always support the other schools. Like if anybody else is actually instructing, they're prepared to go out onto the hill and train these guys and stand there and take that risk. I really support them. I want, I want those guys to do well because you never make money really instructing. You, you know, it's, you do it for the love of the sport. So um, hopefully my stuff that I'm doing on Fly With Greg is helping paragliding schools because guys are coming from even early days and haven't even started the sport and they're learning all the safety things, they're learning the techniques, the ground handling, they're going out and getting some ideas and practicing and it should just make the instructor's life a bit easier because they've got that kind of foundation of theory. Cool. Back to a little bit more of a straight view. Just trying to fix the horizon. This is very technical. Velcro and thumb touch. There we go. Excellent. Yeah, if you're wondering if you could come and join um, Jackson, uh, it's a bit top end. Um, but I would say it's probably worth coming down. I don't know, you might need to check the forecast and just see what's forecast for sunset time. Um, I think this will probably taper off slightly and it just needs to drop, I don't know, 10 k's an hour, 8 k's an hour, and it'll be very pleasant for you. So I wouldn't write it off. I think it might be worth looking at. So here's somebody that's picked a very good idea, a very good place to launch, away from the Venturi somewhere near the top, but away from the top. I'm not using speed bar. So that's something you can do. Sorry about the shout there. Um, something you can do if you're trying to help other pilots, um, if they're standing on the slope. So just fly with hands up. Um, most gliders are trimmed pretty much the same speed. You know, pretty close. My X Alps is maybe 39, 38. Uh, most gliders are like 36, 37. So it's pretty close. So if, if you can see somebody flying with hands up and you know they're not on speed bar and they've got penetration, then you know that you can probably fly. Because um, it's only going to be one or two Ks off that. Right. Back to an amazing view of the traffic going past an A27. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit limited with this camera, uh, how far I can show you, but there you can see where the guy is standing on the top of the slope, thinking about launching, and that's me coming back with my shadow, and I'm turning before I get near him. Uh, Kevin, I'm flying the Omega X up, so it's pretty quick. Hey, Johan. Nice to see you, having a paragliding festival in wilderness. 
Oh, that would be amazing. Love to be there. It's a wonderful place. If you haven't gone there yet, consider looking up Johan Anderson in Wilderness. He's got a flying school there. And uh, it's a really lovely place to just go and have a holiday. Otherwise, hook up with Barry at Birdman Paragliding. Shout out to Barry. He really knows his stuff. They've got a fantastic setup, really good accommodation. Really, really nice to hang out with those guys. They're always flying. So that's, a, that's the way to see South Africa, I think. If I was going to go there and just have a holiday. Cool. Chancer, thanks, man. That's great. Thank you very much. I do appreciate all the contributions. The tip jar is always open. And you're welcome to contribute. It's not necessary. It just puts a smile on my dial. So thank you very much. You know, I'd be doing this anyway. Um, I just love flying and I love sharing the view and the experience. And I will be working on getting a, a better live streaming camera set up. But for now, GoPro has let me down royally with the crashy app. So you've got the wonders of Android which doesn't seem to have a problem with live streaming at all. And uh, I've tried some wide angle adapters on the phone, but they make the picture blurry and on. I stick with the phone on the riser and happy chats. So this is starting to smoothen out a little bit. This is going to get in a little bit later in the day. So we've got less thermal bubbles coming through and more just ridge soaring. Excellent. Thanks, Sandrin. I'm glad that it works nicely. It would be nice for me to be able to sort of chat to you, but the camera is so close to me. Um, it, <laughs> I don't really want to make you look at my nose. Um, so we'll just have this sort of lazy aerial view Hans Verst thank you see you at the Eiger tour well that'll be brilliant um, I'm really looking forward to the Eiger tour thanks Oliver um, I'm hoping that it's going to be open and I'm hoping that I'm fit enough to do it um, <laughs> I'm just so lazy after lockdown I didn't really do a lot of exercise during lockdown I kind of got into lockdown mode and just did a lot of computer work um, and uh, unfortunately the editing takes its toll on your body because you just sit in front, in front of a computer with a mouse and push it around um, which is another reason why I'm wanting to do more live because this means I can just stay in the air I get really fit pretty quickly if I'm flying because uh, there's no opportunity for snacks and uh, I just love playing and going down on the slope and running back up again I could do this all day so I'm wanting to be out here in the sun a lot more this year and hopefully that'll get me as fit as I need to be for the Eiger Tour. As you can see there are um, rather limited opportunities for big mountain ascents uh, where I live. So I'm not getting a lot of uh, big sustained uh, altitude work but I'm going to make up for it with the flying. <laughs> Launch or something small and fly around the course. Uh, okay, interesting question there, Scott, do low pressure days create wider lift band? Um, yeah, it depends, it's not so much to do with the pressure overall, uh, it's to do with the lapse rate, and that can change, but usually, uh, yes, if you've got a high pressure, it tends to almost compress the lift band a bit, um, the air is generally descending, the thermals are pushing up against the high pressure you find the thermals tend to be narrower rougher edges uh, sometimes stronger and generally it's a little harder to fly and the lift tends to be closer onto the slope conditions are harder and when you get low pressure you tend to find that thermals have got a little bit more freedom they tend to be uh, wider gentler and more spread out and the lift band is also similarly a little bit easier right so we've got the guy on the top of the slope he's just pulled up 
and he's able to stand there and just hold his wing and then just launch that looks like he's in a in a good place i think he's just playing around just feeling the wing so that's sort of ideal and in this sort of uh, situation with a hill like this if the wind is strong you want to launch on a piece of ridge where the wind is actually coming across the ridge and not on the piece where it's straight on that gives you more opportunity to just fly off the ridge and get a bit of freedom okay I'm gonna try a little bit of an experiment now and see if I can do this um, can't find Greg on X contest I don't know if uh, if it's working um, but you can try I should be on X contest and it should be live streaming live tracking me uh, oh okay what have I done I've given you a velcro face there we go right so now we are handheld just a little trick here to keep it steady uh, but it means I can give you a little bit better view of the hill and where we're flying like that there we go so that's the top of my and this is usually what I'm doing when I'm flying with my GoPro I'm sort of tracking my hand around all the time to keep things in shot so you can see what's going on so now I'm, it's getting more lifty uh, that's the best that I can give you of my dashboard uh, I've got my trusty Skytrax which really is a brilliant vario and it's really really good at sensing the lift very quickly and giving you a very simple picture to look at pictures more like that it gives you an idea of where we are and what we're doing it's a funny thing when you film uh, a screen like that you never get a true reflection of what it actually looks like to your eyes because uh, the video sees differently, the camera sees differently than your eye. You tend to get more screen glare and reflections when you video it. Cool, okay, we're back on the riser, so that worked nicely. Um, Marek, does it make sense to buy a, a Vario with a, a thermal assistant on the screen? Absolutely. Um, I actually think this Skytrax is brilliant as a first instrument. It's simple enough. Uh, it'll last you right through to cross-country flying, even into competitions. And it's got that useful Vario Assistant. Uh, the Thermal Assistant is quite unique on the Skytrax. I haven't seen any other instrument that's got something of this nature where it uh, it extrapolates where the thermal is based on the lift that you've got and it gives you a circle picture that you are circling around not just a dot like the strongest lift that you hit it's giving you uh, a mathematical calculation of where it thinks the thermal core is and where you need to turn to intersect it so it's a very brilliant bit of mathematics and it works very very well so that helps um, if you just want to go with really simple um, you can just get a simple BP Vario and you can use uh, XE Track to give you like airspace and stuff like that. But I wouldn't really want to look at this phone screen all the time for my main uh, instrument function and information. I think you're going to run out of battery power pretty quickly that way too. Cool. Okay. Um, Skytrax versus XE Tracer. <laughs> okay, Jacob, I've actually filmed that. Um, I flew the two next to each other, and it's one of my typical in the edit pile videos. Um, I've now got, you know, like 20 different little video clips and uh, some audio from the two different Varios with separate microphones, and now it's the whole project of putting that together into a, a video for YouTube and and then I go flying, I'd rather go flying. So I have compared the two. Um, briefly, uh, I've tried it out. It's a very good Vario. 
Um, it's uh, on par with the Skytrax in terms of its sensitivity. Um, it does things slightly differently, tends to hold on to uh, telling you about lift slightly longer than the Skytrax. The Skytrax is quicker to stop beeping when you go out of lift, which is quite useful. Um, and the Skytrax has got a more descriptive variation in the climb as you're going up and down, you know, your climb is increasing. Um, the the Exe Tracer is slightly more sedate in that um, it doesn't give you as much information. So I prefer the Skytrax after testing the two. I thought the Vario and the Skytrax was better slightly, um, but the Exe Tracer is in the top, you know, definitely in the top five um, out of Varios. I haven't had a lot of them to compare recently, um, but it certainly is a superb Vario. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, in terms of functionality, uh, the, X, uh, the Skytrax 2.1 blows the XE Tracer out of the water. For the money that you're spending on the two instruments, uh, the Skytrax has got a lot more to offer. It's got an amazing sort of immediate update on Wi-Fi. So you just switch it on at home and it says, oh, there's an update, update the firmware, update the airspace, everything's current. Uh, no, it's it's fantastic. It de definitely is better overall, um, but there might be particular reasons why you want to have the Exe Tracer. It's still a valid instrument. It's got its own features. It does uh, the flam thing differently. Uh, I wish it didn't because now it's sort of doing the VHS Betamax thing again and separating the Farnet from the flam. And some guys have got flam, and some guys have got Farnet and I'd rather that it's open source and everybody has got the same which Skytrax, Udi, Flymaster, the other instruments are able to see each other and be seen on Farnet. And the XE Tracer is only visible on other XE Tracer units and the Farnet, like a Skytrax, won't see the XE Tracer because of the way that XE Tracer has chosen to use Farnet. So I don't, I don't like that division, um, but it depends if you've got a bunch of friends that are all flying XC Tracers, then it might make sense to get an XC Tracer, so you're all on the same instrument. Cool, I hope that answers your question. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Okay. Yeah, I really like uh, Saint Front Pollen. I, I really like the Farnet idea, um, particularly when you look at something like Burnair and what they're doing with uh, tracking thermals and feeding information back to the pilots. And you can get, uh, uh, as far as I understand, the Farnet will actually show you other Farnet pilots that have encountered thermals. It'll come up on your sky tracks as you're flying. You can actually see the, uh, the thermal where it was. And what the Skytrax does that's amazing is it also tracks the thermal with the wind drift. So it compensates for the wind drift. So it will actually follow that thermal track and when you get there it will have moved but the Skytrax will know where it is. So there's a lot of fun stuff that we can do with, um, with the Farnet. So I, I support uh, Skytrax, I think they're great. I think the instrument's well worth looking at. If you're looking at a first-time instrument, might as well just spend the money. And also look in various countries in the world, um, this, the civil aviation authorities are giving rebates for uh, instruments that can do um, FLAM. So at the moment you can get the Skytrax for almost half price, uh, depending on where you are. Okay, so I'm sitting here now in the sweet spot. I'm in front of the hill, I'm on that separation line that I was talking about where the wind is coming in from somewhere over there and I'm sitting directly upwind of the main part of the ridge. So I'm using that separation point where the wind's going to divert, some of it's going to go that way, some of it's going to go that way as it gets to the hill and I'm using that to get forward movement which means that if I encounter something out here, I can circle in it and I've got lots of room 
before I get back to the hill. Uh, Jumple Ads is the car park there okay for overnights? No, it's not. Um, it's not a campsite. It's, uh, we've got an agreement with the farmer that we're just allowed to park our cars and uh, it's not an overnight campsite. Um, but if you're in the area, there are some of the hilltops where you won't get bothered. Um, I've often seen vans up on top of some of the hills, um, even at Devil's Dyke. So you can find places in this area if you've got a camper van. You can find quiet side roads to camp. You don't need to come and, and sort of put pressure on the flying site um, by doing things that might stress people out. So, welcome to come down this part of the world. Get some flying in. Wicked. Okay. So there's some guys now on top of the hill thinking about flying. And you can see some of them have laid out, getting ready a little bit too high up. That's going to be the windy spot. And I would suggest coming down the slope so that it just gives you time to get yourself sorted out while you're launching. You're not launching yourself right in the critical power, power band. So there we've got the other guy soaring. You can see he's quite close to the top there. He's probably going to top land and just try and play around with touching down. It's pretty windy there. He's got the glider down nicely. So there, when you're trying to do that sort of a landing, you want to put the glider over to the side. So that you did it perfectly there. You come in and slope land and you just continue that direction. Keep the wing on one side of you and actually pull the brake to let the one tip go into the ground on the up one side. And then pull the other brake. This makes it easier. Excellent, Glide America, the view is good, carry on. <laughs> yeah, we've got very small sites here down in the south of England. So we get very good at uh, getting lift from uh, low little things and thermaling. So I think the UK pilots are particularly good at kind of surviving in light stuff. You know, at the end of the day, the ability to just kind of float over the flatlands and fly on little, little hillocks. Uh, you get very good at that and it's all about understanding the airflow around the terrain. Um, I would love there to be some sort of tectonic event and uh, for France to crash into England and create a nice ridge along the middle of it. Um, but without being able to do that, I've tried on Google Earth but I've never managed to influence the geography much. So um, we're stuck with waiting for the summer and uh, a little bit more power in the sun to start generating some interesting stuff off this field and then I can get up and get higher and start uh, giving you a little bit more of a tour of the south of England um, but for now we've got ridge soaring uh, which is great for just building up airtime and just getting back into the swing of things and filming a shadow like that come on shadow get in focus there we go Whee Attack! Out of the sun! So every time I'm turning back on the separation point, I'm using that all the time when I'm riding this sort of terrain. So just work it out. If you're flying cross country and you get to any kind of terrain slope, try and find the bump and find the, the wind direction, line it up and come in and sit on that separation point. That's your most likely place to find lift and also gives you the most freedom of movement. Gilham, we're waiting for you in Brazil. Yeah, I would love to. I'm gonna get my uh, world travel plans fired up in next year. Uh, this year I'm gonna work on video production and uh, helping members with their flying questions and doing some local hike and fly races. And then next year, start doing the world tour. Uh, I've got a lot of places I want to visit and a lot of invitations from great pilots around the world. So I'll be visiting Brazil, I'll be visiting the States for sure, and uh, a lot of places in Europe. And anywhere I'm invited to really, I'll be very happy to come and fly with you guys.
Uh, ripstop pilots, have I ever used the Air 3? Um, uh, no, I presume you're talking about an instrument and not a wing. Um, I haven't and I try to stay away from trying too many instruments. Once I find one that's really good, like the Skytrax, um, instrument reviews can take a lot of time. So I'm, I'm not uh, keen on just picking up another instrument and doing the whole comparison thing. Uh, it takes a long time. So I'm going to do the, the XE Tracer review, but I'll probably stick that for, for the moment, leave it there. I might do a sort of a low end instrument. Um, I might try the Sky Beam, Sky Drop, one of those sort of things, um, just as an option. But um, yeah, I think once you find a good variant, it's best to just stick with it and not worry too much about what everybody else is using. Um, and there's also a lot of good stuff on the apps to play around with. Um, I've got another guy that's just launched now and he's on a Yotta 2. You were asking about the Yotta 2 and Edgar. Um, it's a fantastic wing. Don't be in a hurry to get off the Yotta 2 because it'll take you a long way. Uh, it's a really good cross-country wing. It's very easy to fly. It's got very nice precise handling. And it's got good glide. I was quite impressed with it when I flew it and reviewed it. Wow, Brian, you're saying 42 miles an hour this morning at Mount Cabin. Okay, it's definitely getting better. Uh, it's now, I would say, just nice, strong soaring. Um, there are a couple of guys that have flown, and there's a guy on a yacht behind me who's having no problem at all getting up nice and high. Wonderful. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Because I think my battery's going to about to go, and I'd like to just do a little bit of playing around. Um, I'm going to uh, do some wing overs and get back into the swing of things, but I don't want to do that with a camera sort of <laughs> lightly velcroed onto the riser. So it's been great seeing all of you guys. Um, I'm going to Oops, there we go. It's been uh, great hanging out with you guys, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Let's get these back on. Ah, that's better. I'm looking straight into the sun. Um, yeah, I'll do a live stream uh, when, we, when I've got a, a nice day again and I can get some cross country out of it. I was hoping to do a thermaling kind of talk through, um, but this has just been about kind of wind flow around the hill, and I'll do a thermaling one in due course. Uh, there's a little bit of a thermal there. I'm going to play. Keep well, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks for all of your contributions, you guys that have dropped in the chip tip jar. Very welcome. Thank you very much. I can now afford to go and have a nice pizza as well. And I can bring home a pizza for the wife and daughter. They'll be stoked. Um, and maybe something for pudding. So thank you very much. Keep well. Fly safe. And see you on the YouTube channel and greg.com. Come and join me there. You'll be most welcome flying and you can watch some more videos about flying. Thanks very much. See you soon. I'll leave you with a glide into the sunset.